Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. Hey, in this video, I want to cover this article from Sue Cryptos. So I got a lot to cover. So we're just going to quickly talk about uh, CoinGecko here. We're currently sitting at a $1.98 trillion market cap, currently up 0.5%. And, you know, I'm not going down the list here, but you can just see that, you know, we're having, you know, some green, some red in the market coming over here to the Bitcoin fear greed index. We're still in this 44. So as we know, we pop back down into this fear range. So who knows where we're going to uh, be uh, market wise, you know, over the next couple of days and weeks. But, you know, due to a lot of uncertainty, uh, we can definitely expect some volatility. So let's quickly jump into this article here because this is kind of kind of a precursor into kind of the conversation we're going to have. So it says February 17th will make or break the Ripple versus SEC case. So there's been some videos coming out talking about the case can end on, you know, February 17th and yada, yada, yada. So nobody really knows. They're kind of just making their, their guesses. But it says, why February 17th is a make or break day? So coming down here, here's some key points. It says, Judge Annalisa Torres has ordered the two uh, warring fra uh, factions, the SEC and the Ripple, to unseal some documents that could make or break the case. The sealed documents will finally reveal who has been lying in court between the SEC and Ripple regarding whether the uh, latter knew it was selling a security. So I'm just going to read through this and uh, kind of give you some food for thoughts. It says, did Ripple and his two executives, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse, know that XRP was a security as they sold billions of dollars worth of the token? This will be the question to which we might finally learn the conclusive answer in a week's time. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has been in a long and messy legal battle with Ripple since December 2020. It's accused the San Francisco company and its two key executives of selling unregistered secu securities knowingly. Ripple has fought back, claiming that no time did the SEC issue uh, guidance that would indicate XRP was a security. But now the focus has turned rather than scrutinizing the SEC's failure to give guidance is now on whether the third party legal firm that uh, Ripple consulted as those all those years ago to uh, uh, told the company that XRP was a security. Last week, Judge Annalisa Torres of the U U.S. District Court in Manhattan ruled Ripple must unseal the documents showing the legal advice it received regarding the legality of the XRP token. So why February, uh, February 17th is a make or break day? It says, back in 2012, when Ripple launched, Chris Larson, who was the CEO then, sought advice uh, from a law firm on the status of XRP. The law firm, whose name has remained undisclosed, all this while submitted two, mem two memos to Ripple in which it had analyzed the legal issues that could arise from the new token. All this had been, uh, excuse me, all this had been public, public knowledge. What has been the bone? What has been the bone of the, uh, contention was the content of the memos. According to the SEC, Ripple was advised XRP is a security, but chose to march on with its token plans regardless. Chris and Ripple's uh, dispute this allegation. The claim that any uh, reasonable mind would have concluded that XRP is a security under federal laws from the memos they received. However, despite asserting the memos exonerate them, Ripple and its execs. Uh, do not want them to be unsealed. In fact, they fought hard to keep what's in the memos away from the SEC and the general public. In one filing towards this, the two claim that what's in the memo is competitively sensitive and additionally doesn't affect the case in a significant manner. Judge Torres disagrees with Ripple. If the memos prove your innocence and you keep reinforcing them in court, then they must be relevant to the case, she argued in a nutshell. By February 17th, we will be able to uh, we will be able to judge for ourselves who has been lying between the SEC versus Ripple. The regulator is intent on ac accessing accessing the memos as they would prove the Ripple knew it was committing a crime but went on about its business regardless. The memos would also decimate Ripple's fair notice defense. It says it says quote we aren't <laughs> we aren't scared of the of these memos. Ripple says as XRP surges. Could the memos be uh, damaging to Ripple's defense? If they are, then the blockchain payments company is doing a great job of hiding it. In a statement following the latest ruling by Judge Torres, Stuart Alderati, Ripple's general counsel, said the company is eagerly awaiting the unsealing of the memos as they will show that in 2017, Ripple received a legal analysis that XRP was not an investment contract. The SEC knew that XRP was trading globally for eight years before it brought a case against the cryptocurrency, a development that the attorney describes as baffling. He added, and this is quote, we look forward to the public having access to these documents as we continue to vigorously defend this case. The SEC isn't backing down either. Following Judge's ruling, it stated that it's critical for the public to see the memo so that if not for anything else, to prove the regulator, the regulator hasn't been lying about its accusations. Once the memos are public, the case will take a very different or very different dynamic. If Ripple hasn't been lying, it's a lack of fair notice defense will get a big boost and the case could crumble for the SEC. 
And while both sides continue to show their confidence and positive outcome, someone is going to lose come February 17th and lose badly. So this is just based on, uh, you know, this article and how they view things. Uh, just to quickly touch on this real quick, um, the, SEC, uh, the SEC, SEC isn't backing down either. Uh, it says, following the judge's ruling, it stated that it's critical for the public to see the memos so that if not for anything else to prove the regulators hasn't been lying about its accusations. Okay, so what about all the other, you know, what about all the other stuff that, you know, that you're trying to redact or seal that the public can't know, but you're requiring that Ripple does? It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. But coming over here, Johnny Deaton kind of touches on, he says, I don't believe the two legal memos will make, make or break the case. I predict that if you want to argue XRP is or was a security, you'll read the memos as supportive. If you want to argue XRP isn't security or wasn't a security, you'll read the memos as supportive uh, confirmation bias. So coming over here says, most likely the memos instruct Ripple to be careful because XRP could be considered a security under certain circumstances. The same advice applied to ETH, BTC, or any, uh, or any asset. One thing that should be in a legal memo at some point is advice not to call XRP the same name as the company. <laughs> So that's uh, Johnny Deaton's take on it. Who you know? Who knows what's going to come up, come about about this? Uh, you know, this unsealing of these memos. Uh, but he continues on here to something else. So obviously, there's been a lot of uh, going back and forth when it comes to you know Ethereum's security is is a security or not, XRP being a security or not, and just the the whole Ethereum free pass, uh, Ethereum free pass, and the clash between. Uh, you know, Ripple versus SEC and then uh, Ripple and uh, XRP versus the Ethereum community and yada, yada, yada. So uh, Santiago Valles uh, put up a good little tweet and Johnny Dean had responded to it. So I wanted to touch on it. it says that the thing is, I love ETH. I mind ETH. I use ETH all the time for transactions and one inch on one inch balancer staking, etc. That being said, it's clear there's a concerted effort to create new gatekeepers in lieu of this promise of the promise. I'm not knocking uh, building a uh, building business. I'm knocking collision, uh, collision. So it says, like Santiago, I own ETH. I don't attack ETH. Today's ETH is not a security. And I would have filed the case versus the SEC if they were arguing today's ETH is a security. I do attack uh, crony uh, capitalism, however. So just like how I told you, I invest in ETH. I value ETH. So there's there's really no shade. It's just like we want a level playing field. We want it to be fair across the board. So uh, it says cronyism is an economic system in which business uh, businesses thrive, not as a result of free enterprise, but rather a return on money am amassed through a collision between a business class and the uh, political class. This is often achieved by the manipulation of relationships with government power. I mean, we we know that's quite evident. I mean, based on what we've seen, yeah, maybe allegedly to prove him, to prove and otherwise, but it's like we've seen it. We've seen them with their own voices, their, them on video, and, and that's that's only the stuff that surfaced. There's so much other stuff that we haven't seen or heard of yet, and it's 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 a lot of it's starting to surface more and more each and every day. Tag XRP had put up a good tweet. He said, "Oh, I didn't even like her." Uh, so it says the SEC is a civil law enforcement agency that requires companies to disclose information so investors can make informed decisions. Not one single instance during this case have I learned anything new about XRP or Ripple. I've only learned more about the SEC corruption. <laughs> so that's the truth. You know, you you require other companies to disclose information, but literally what I just highlighted here, it's like you're talking about, yeah, we're writing, you know, we're excited or we're ready for this, uh, you know, these memos to be revealed for the public. It's crucial that the public knows it, but it's like, okay, well, what about all the other stuff that you redacted so far? Like, why can't we know that stuff? But, you know, everyone else has to. So that's a great, uh, great tweet by Tag XRP. JV, the clutch, man, always posts some good stuff, says, hashtag crypto gives the average person a chance to change their lives. Our government wants to stop that. Congress are allowing the SEC to lead the charge against stifling the innovation in these opportunities. So I 100% agree, you know, who Congress, I don't know what Congress is doing quite honestly, but this is the this is what my uh my channel is all about because I truly believe that crypto is key to financial freedom and life-changing wealth. And m me and my family being able to uh contribute to this space and invest in this space this early says a lot, you know, and they compare this to, you know, the, uh, the dot com, the dot com era, the internet era. So like, obviously this is a massive, a massive opportunity in our lives. So it's like us being, you know, especially being heavy, heavily invested in XRP. It's like us being, uh, you know, suppressed and, you know, held down by this case. It's only hurting, you know, us achieving those goals. I mean, we've, we've all been slapped in the face back in December, 2020. So it's just like, at what point, 
is Congress going to step up and make things right so this space can, you know, be, flourish in its innovation and its growth? Great, great uh, tweet, JB. Stefan Huber. It says, we're not here to take market share. We're here to make a, a dent in the universe. So this is another classic, for, you know, from another uh, Ripple, Ripple Re representative here. So we're going to take a listen into this. <laughs> to put so, you on the spot so, here. <laughs> so, no, no, it's very simple. So I think one thing, if there is one message that you can get in this room is Ripple is not an ordinary company. We are not here to make a, have a small market share or do X, do Y and make small amount of money or something to happen. We are here to make a dent in the universe. Either we will change the remittance un universe, the way you understand, the way value gets transferred across the world, between people, between institutions, or we will just fade away. So it's almost zero or one, and some of it comes from our Silicon Valley arrogance. Some of it comes from, yeah, that's the reason six years ago, we were born with the mission of moving money like information moves today, right? And we are making it possible working with the existing ecosystem. So I think this is a key differentiator about Ripple. And that's the reason we are a monoline company. Every day we get tens of ideas to say, why don't you do security settlement? Why don't you work in trade finance? Why don't you do X, Y, Z? And what we tell them is um, just cross-border remittances is $155 trillion problem. We'll solve this first. We'll make a difference to everybody who's present in this room. And once we have made the difference, then only we will look at something else. So we are like uh, Google is for search, Ripple is for remittances. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it right, and we will not rest till we earn your respect. Absolutely. That, that's, a, that's a great answer to whatever question that we're given. But that just you know shows the strength and power between you know their mission. You know, find the good fight trying to solve a real world problem. So coming over here, real XRP boy says the face you make when XRP takes the number one spot in the crypto. <laughs> so, you know, who knows uh, when and if, you know, XRP will ever take the number one spot. But I thought this was hilarious. You know, obviously, you know, me being an, a heavy investor in XRP, this will be, you know, an awesome situation. But, you know, who knows the powers that be, you know, if they would ever allow that to happen. But. Ending on, the, on this one, Hassan's always posting some great tweets. He says, only 1% of cryptocurrencies will survive led by XRP. 99% will go uh, with the win forever. So, I mean, we all know that's quite evident. For those of us that's been through other uh, market cycles, we've seen that there's certain projects that used to be in like the top 10, top 20, and that used to be in the market. But, you know, when it came to this this uh, market cycle, you know, they're nowhere need, you know, nowhere to be found or they nowhere near, you know, the top 10 or top 20. So that just kind of like, what do they say? How the cookie crumbles? It is what it is. And it's just a reality. But as you know, as adoption, you know, further happens and the space becomes you know, more legitimate scene, you know, f to the wider perspective of people. And there's, you know, certain uh, proper regulation and clarity within the space. You can definitely expect, you know, a mass, mass majority of cryptocurrencies are going to be gone. And the ones that have true staying power, that have true utility, and that truly solve a real world problem are going to be the ones that stick around. Hey, with all that being said, you know, stay strong out there, be safe.